Welcome to the Journalism Innovation Podcast, where we bring you the most interesting perspectives and insights from media entrepreneurs and publishers at the heart of news innovation in Europe. I'm your host, Tara Kelly, and in this episode of the Journalism Innovation Podcast, we discuss how not-for-profit media in Europe are leading the way in designing a more equitable and inclusive media for all. From micrograds to design sprints, we examine what it takes to build the infrastructure to sustain media that audiences want to engage with. To learn more, we sat down with Sabrina Faramarzi, Managing Director at Are We Europe Foundation, a nonprofit media collective based in Amsterdam and Berlin, focusing on innovation and diversity in European media. And Alessia Melchiore, co-founder of Mare Media, an independent Naples-based media collective working in journalism, media education, and community storytelling. The pair discuss how parachute journalism is problematic for media and the importance of investing in audience-first local journalism. This podcast is part of the European Journalism Center's Journalism Innovation Network a newly launched initiative for media entrepreneurs and news innovators looking for a space to connect, learn, and thrive. To join, head over to ejc.net slash network. This podcast and network is made possible with the support of the Google News Initiative. Now let's take a listen to our conversation with Sabrina Faramarzi and Alessia Belchiore. Welcome to the Journalism Innovation Podcast. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Sabrina, let's start with you. You're the managing director of Are We Europe? There's been a lot of changes over the years. I wonder if you could just catch us up to speed on the history of how it was founded and where you guys are now. Yeah, of course. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know about us, the Are We Europe Foundation is a nonprofit media collective And we're very much dedicated to innovation and diversity in the European media landscape. How we do this is through the uh, creation of pan-European media initiatives and uh, trainings and design sprints. And design sprints are a form of design thinking, well, a series of design thinking methodologies that we adapted uh, specifically for media And so our sort of main overarching goal is that we don't believe in parachute journalism and that we, that the people who can do the best reporting about um, their local communities are those who are already engaged in them. Um, But that's not how we started. Uh, Are We Europe actually started as a project by four friends. Um, looking at uh, Europe with a with a critical um, eye and looking beyond the borders of, of the EU. And that culminated into a fairly successful print magazine for several years. And that print magazine was very much a space for young people to get their first sort of break into journalism or for people who came from the kinds of backgrounds where it was much harder to to get into journalism and, and into media. And after some time, our founder, Mick, decided that it really wasn't enough to just pay individuals and commission them for their stories and that we needed to do more. And that ended up becoming uh, an idea for a project which was called The Circle Hubs, and that ran for two years. We chose... Uh, eight second tier and non-capital cities across Europe, went in, collected local journalists, creatives and entrepreneurs and helped them build their own independent media hubs so that they could essentially report and work with the communities that they know best. And over the two years of the projects, we gave them mentorships and also micro grants to, to help set them up. And our overarching mission is that by 2030, we will have established at least one independent media hub in all 44 countries across Europe that are not just, you know, set up in their own right and and, and are sustainable in their own right, but they are also networked and collaborate with each other. And our first eight hubs, well, we have Mariah Media, um, but we also have uh, in Naples, Italy, but we also have Belgrade, Serbia, Gothenburg in Sweden. Cluj La Poca in Romania, Tbilisi in Georgia, Porto in Portugal, Vilnius in Lithuania, and Lyon 
in France. And um, a lot of these were chosen through our own kind of framework and, and needs analysis. But there really wasn't that much data out there about, uh, you know, the kind of low innovation ecosystems or places in which um, there were lots of freelance and independent um, media makers, um, but really not that, you know, enough infrastructure for them to um, really, yeah, stay and report on the places that 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 they live in, and instead, you know, flying off and and really ending up in you know Brussels or London and 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 our focus is really about decentralizing the European media landscape and and taking it away from from that kind of western european uh uh power i guess and uh yeah one of our one of our success stories is uh Mara media of which Alessia is is here today yeah. and i wonder Alessia let's turn to you maybe you could tell us a little bit Mara media and you know, how this has come about and yeah, your work in Naples and beyond. Yes. Uh, well, thanks for having me also on this podcast and for giving us the chance to talk about Marea. So Marea Media is, of course, the newborn child of uh, Are We Europe? And um, as Sabrina already said, we registered as a non-profit because we want to be a media hub and a sort of reference point for Southern Italy and in a second step for the whole Mediterranean region. Our main focus is to challenge the narratives around Southern Italy. And we want to do so uh, through three main levels, which are investigative journalism, media literacy and community building initiatives. We all came to the conclusion that the journalism in Italy, especially local journalism in Italy, is quite um, challenged, let's say, um, by financial struggles and so on. And that also brings a lack of uh, representation uh, in the mainstream media, especially for uh, the region of the South since uh, it is the most affected also in terms of uh, coverage, news coverage. And so this is how we started. Uh, we also had an event, a launch event in February, where we gathered uh, not only journalists, but <clears throat> media activists, environmental activists, uh, people working with uh, um, NGOs in Southern Italy and doing a lot of excellent work that they never could showcase or they didn't have the enough space to showcase so we wanted to talk with them and also with the people joining the event about how to change where to start um for the change of the narratives the media narratives or on southern italy and i think it might be interesting to sort of hear some of your personal stories of how you got into this field and sabrina do you want to talk to us about that sure i actually started my career as a researcher what i always knew was that i just loved talking to people and uh you know storytelling whatever whatever format that that came in whether that was through written words or audio or video um and i started in in an industry which is which is about trends and foresight and it really taught me how to really think ahead and kind of see what's happening on the horizon before um before it actually sort of gets there and so i managed to wangle my way into a scholarship for a, a master's degree and that really gave me the space to think about journalism in a different way and i decided not to do journalism at some of the more traditional institutions I decided to do journalism at an art school, not because I cared to write about art, but because I wanted to think of journalism as a creative practice in its own right, an arts practice in its own right. And that also gave me a bit more of an idea of the ways in which journalism can can appear and what our role is as journalists and how we you know, contribute to, to civic engagement. And throughout that 
career, I ended up, um, throughout the sort of start of my career, I ended up uh, being lucky enough to, yeah, work very briefly for the New York Times, for the Guardian. I also wrote a lot for Vice and, and Wired and other kinds of places, but I really also kept my kind of researcher core. And because I was always within sort of creative industries, um, I was also very familiar with design thinking and um, and that kind of approach. And uh, yeah, last year, Our We Europe um, came to me and Mick, the founder, um, now, what's, now is moving into more creative direction for the overarching organizations. So for those of us, for those of you that don't know, so our Europe is um, our nonprofit uh, foundation, and we also have our sister organization um, or studio, who are a creative storytelling studio who run all kinds of creative outputs for for other nonprofits. We are also building um, a new product, which is a marketplace for independent uh, media, and we have our demo program. So there's 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 quite a lot going on. And we still have, of course, our uh, all studio office in Amsterdam, but we work all across the continent and that doesn't really, you know, our, our work is not sort of, yeah, tied to tied to where our, our offices are. Right. Absolutely. Um, and I'd love to hear more about the marketplace and the Diva program in more detail. But first, um, Alessia, tell us about your path and and how you found yourself at Mara Media? Uh, well, um, the Circle Hubs, the project of the Circle Hubs, it was like an opportunity I was looking for in Italy. Because as Sabrina mentioned before, um, I was also one of those people who had to leave, who had to leave the country uh, to work. Uh, to do my profession. So I, I studied journalism and I worked as a freelance journalist um, since the <laughs> beginning. I found myself doing it more abroad than in the place where I came from. And this is not what I wanted to do because I wanted to do journalism to talk about the issues and the solutions of my own area. So... Um, the fact that I was an expert um, was really, yeah, was uh, like something that I struggled with, uh, especially in the last few years where I was based in Brussels and uh, exactly in Brussels, like uh, Sabrina mentioned. So um, when I saw the opportunity of uh, participating into the design sprint in Naples, I applied and I said, this is exactly what I want right now. I, I want um, someone that gives me a network to build something like Marea in Naples, in southern Italy, where there is a lack of infrastructure, especially for, for media. I can tell you that to be a journalist in, in Italy right now is more tough than before. There are like half of the journalists that were there in 2008. Um, which is also the year that I, when I started studying and also when I started thinking of joining the profession. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I really want to take as much opportunities as this one to, to build something different, uh, which in Italy was never there before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's very interesting. And I wonder, maybe you could tell us a little bit about Mario Media, like, what are you covering? Give us some examples of, of things that you're focusing on now. Um. Yes. So, well, we are a no profit. We are not yet a news outlet. We are not planning to create a news out outlet for now. Um, but recently, we were in Sarajevo in the Media Blend Hackathon organized by the International Press Institute with RV Europe as well where we um, proposed, where we pitched a crowdfunding platform for investigative journalists in Southern Italy. Um, so projects like this, it's uh, most of our focus is, uh, is building projects like this. So um, creating opportunities for journalists 
especially in southern Italy, or that want to tell stories around southern Italy. It doesn't have to be necessarily, um, let's say, crime. Normally, when you think about southern Italy, you only think about mafia or tourism, let's say. Uh, but it, it, we are trying to focus on all the other nuances, all the other stories that are not covered because there are no journalists in the rural areas or because, yeah, there is no one doing it right now. So um, we also produced a podcast with the hub in Gothenburg, uh, where we um, talk about the profession of journalist, what makes a journalist as such, let's say, what defines a journalist, which is a very relevant question right now in Italy, since there are so many journalists, uh, including myself, who are not registered in the order of journalists. Um, so even if I publish with the New York Times or with the TRT World of very international news outlets, very famous international news outlets, I'm not considered a journalist in Italy because I, I, I don't have the Italian press card. Yes, absolutely. It sounds like there's just a lot that can shut out voices that need to be heard. And yeah, it's, it's very problematic across Southern Europe, across Europe in general, but very much Southern Europe, I think, is hurting more than other regions. Um, but I, speaking of that, I just wonder, um, Sabrina, can you talk us through some of the methodologies for building these media hubs and like how are they funded? What does success look like? It sounds like this; these are more about building infrastructure and enabling journalists rather than just straight news outlets, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. And so um, for the Circle House project that was funded by the European Commission, and each hub received a micro grant of 8,000 euros to get them set up, um, as well as, uh, yeah, mentorship and trainings. Um, and so, yes, of course, there are, you know, questions around how do we, you know, as are we Europe becoming a, an intermediary funder, how do we... Um, provide reassurance to you know larger larger funders that that that, that we can showcase the success of of building these hubs and I think the success of that is really through our design sprints and design sprinting is a yeah is a series of uh, exercises that was originally you know built by Google Ventures. And it's really about getting from conception to prototype in a very short space of time using the resources that you already have. So this isn't, let's be honest, something that media has been very good at doing. You know, it, media it has historically been very slow to innovate and, um, and lots of, you know, barriers and internal politics and essentially not not the most collaborative either. And through design spreads, you have to learn very quickly how to collaborate. Um, you are building things, you know, kind of in the reverse. So really focusing on what does my audience want instead of we're going to build this thing and then see if anybody likes it, you know? And um, if you, if nobody's, you know, reading or watching or listening to your journalism, what is it? What is it actually doing? And when we think about that, you know, we do design sprints for stories, for example. We do design sprints for formats. We do design sprints for business models. So, for example, in our, we did a story design sprint back in 2018 in Moldova using four local activists and artists that were fighting against corruption and election fraud in Moldova, one of the poorest countries in Europe at the time. And in the, yeah, in the five days built the story from conception to completion and the final multimedia story, The Drums of Democracy was nom nominated for the European Press Prize for the most innovative story of 2019. So that's one example of, um, yeah, our story sprint. Uh, last week, we were in Romania um, helping the uh, Romanian broadcaster create new formats uh, for YouTube to engage Gen Z. 
Um, and then we also have our business model design sprints, which um, we have proven quite successful in building eight different hubs already across Europe. And a lot of those methodologies have been adapted from Google and you can find all of those online. And it's really about thinking, you know, audience first instead of production <laughs> first without really thinking you know, is this going to work? Is this a different way to do it? And it's really about pushing through how you normally build um, or produce journalism, whatever, you know, whatever that looks like. And then on another note to that, I would also like to say we also do a lot of what we call off the page journalism activities. Um, so for example, a few weeks ago we were in Amsterdam and we were partner, um, for an event at Club Paradiso, a nightclub in Amsterdam, uh, that gets young people interested in politics and it was pegged to, uh, Europe Day. So the, the night was called Europa Nest. Um, and it's about getting young people in the places, getting to young people in the places that they'd like to be in, in this case, a nightclub. And as, you know, there were DJs and, you know, your classic nightclub setup, we also had, um, you know, a pub quiz about European topics. We also had information on how to vote. We also had panel talks on Ukraine and the, you know, the, co the connection between club culture and protest. And so from our side, there's really lots of different approaches to to journalism and, and media, and it's really thinking about audience first, and there are a multitude of ways in which in which you can do that because audiences just aren't just aren't consuming things in the same way. Right, absolutely. And I think impact is kind of the big buzzword that I think the journalism industry is kind of floating around and actually doing now. So it just makes me wonder um, how does yeah how does impact kind of play into all these different media hubs, but also with Mare Media, is this something that you're trying to measure, um, particularly when you're collaborating with other media hubs from the Are We Europe? Um, yeah, from Are We Europe. I'd like to just jump in quickly there and say that we have a theory of change model for um, the demo program. And we are looking to, yeah, finesse that and, and also publish that as an open source tool that other um, organizations can 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 use. Um, and being able to measure that, we measure that in audience reach. We also measure that in the number of partners that we've had on board. We also measure that in the number of outputs, um, as well as the number of people engaged not just in the sprints, but also people who, you know, turn up to Mariah Media events, for example. And I think it's a really interesting time for media organizations to start thinking in a much more concrete way about their impacts because it's, much, it's becoming more and more difficult to get funding, not because uh, there's less funding, but because there are many more organizations trying to... Um, trying to lift their initiatives on the ground and the best way to do that is to is to work together in these networked and collaborative projects no yeah i totally agree if i think about impact for example since one of the main uh, angles of maria media is also media literacy um how can you measure for example media literacy if you go in the schools and you teach kids how to read the news, how to develop critical thinking, how not to fall for fake news and disinformation. Are you going to measure only on the number of courses, training courses that you have, or also on the how, I mean, if you have a benefit uh, out of those courses, you're going to measure also like how less people fall for fake news or less people fall for disinformation in that case. Uh, so it's something not really easy to grasp, you know what I mean? Like, it's not easy to measure impact when you are dealing with education, for example, or when you are dealing with uh, initiatives that try to um, build communities or at least to engage communities more. It's not only the number of articles that you publish or the number of uh, audience, the number of people that you reach on the social media. 
I think it's something much more than that. So it's, it's something that we also have to think about for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Sabrina, I just wonder if you could talk a little bit about, you know, what are some of the strategic goals for, for these hubs? Um, I mean, I know you're aiming for 44 by 2030, um, but I'm just curious, like, what is the, what, what else do you want them to do other than just launching them? You want them to sustain themselves, obviously, financially, but what are the other goals? It is essential to rebuild local journalism because without that, we really have no, you know, local journalism, local media bridges, divides in communities. It's about, you know, community connection. It's about different perspectives. It's, you know, about how policy affects uh, affects people. And because through this Democrat program, through our design sprints, the main overarching goal is how do you collaborate with each other and how do you do things in a way that is creative and in a, innovative with little resources, essentially. Yes, we do give them uh, micro guards, but it's also about sustaining them to continue to work together. And I just want to add one last thing is that, you know, media and journalism doesn't have a passion problem, it has a process problem. And we need more people in media and journalism who can think more creatively and more, and I know this is probably, you know, has been quite a taboo thing for, for a really long time, but we need people in the media who understand how, how to run organizations as if they're running a business because they need to have a service mindset. We are serving our audiences. We are not um, pitching and preaching things top down because people just don't want to hear it anymore in the same ways. We need to think about new kinds of revenue models. We need to think about different ways of which we collaborate. We need to move closer to our communities and do a better job of listening to, to the people that we serve. And there's various different ways of doing that, but our, our you know, our, our, our mission of having one hub in every country in Europe and having them collaborate with each other, that's a, that's a local journalism media force that could be very, very powerful. And we're going to continue building that anyway. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I just love that quote, like journalism doesn't have a, uh, a passion problem has a process problem, which makes me wonder, Alessia, like, you know, you're a journalist by training, it sounds like, and now you're having to run this hub. What are some of the, you know, what what are some of the challenges and the learning, the, the learnings you've had or that you feel like you need to work on and you want to gain more expertise with, you know, and these these opportunities through Arwa Europe can help that, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, for sure, uh, learning about business is one of the <laughs> challenges because, as you might know, not, I mean, all journalists have a problem with that. Um, but also, project management is also uh, part of the new job, let's say, um, because, of course, you are dealing with projects, you are dealing with organizations, so you have to know how to make sure that everything falls in place, uh, especially when dealing with European funded projects, uh, which are part of our, let's say, business plan as well. Uh, also in Marea, media, I mean. Um, so yeah, definitely I'm learning new things. Uh, I'm learning things that I think are useful generally in life. Um, so, um, it's a process as well, of course, but I think, um, es especially because we are a group of, uh, media professionals, there are not only journalists in our group, but there are also other, uh, professions like communication or visual artists or, um, yeah, this type of other, let's say specialties. Um, I think we are really, um, completing each other in a way. So whenever one needs something, the other jumps in 
and we can have we have really a collaborative and uh, horizontal perspective within our organization at least um but yeah of course the business part is one of the biggest challenges in any case i think and um we are right now currently we are of course thinking of how to sustain ourselves how to get this going in a way that is independent and autonomous of course um and what i what i learned is that diversifying the resources of the portfolio let's say is only is the only way to go so we have to do as many diverse um uh, we have to look for diverse sources of income. And I imagine that's a bit of consultancy, that's yes, a bit of sponsorship, of that's like, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. So it's consultancy, it's sponsorship, it's donation, it's crowdfunding, it's uh, EU projects, it's, um, yeah, all of this all mixed together. Because I think, I think Sabrina has sort of said, uh, very aptly that it's not necessarily that there isn't the same amount of money out there. It's just it's unpredictable and there's more competition. So that means you need to have all these other things running in the background to make sure you can sustain yourself. And s sustainability, not necessarily from an environmental perspective in this case, but financially is kind of the big struggle. And that's what we're seeing, at least in the Slack channel on the Journalism Innovation Network which is how this podcast came about, because it's like, okay, what are the challenges? And I wonder, Sabrina, you, you know, you're talking to other hubs. What are they also, what are their weaknesses when it comes to the business side? And what are they, what are you trying to, what would you like to see happen? Well, first, I would say that journalism and media moves much faster than funding organizations. Um and so it's really about, yeah, it takes quite a, quite a long time to, to really frame it in, in, in a specific way. And, and funders, of course, have their very specific objectives. And that's also why our Europe really became, started to become a, you know, intermediate, intermediary funder. And yes, we're, you know, we're baby intermediary funders at, at, at this moment, but we... Um, our position is really about putting us, you know, we we have the expertise to tackle some of these, you know, big, complicated funding rounds and, and applications in ways that, you know, a group of five local journalists just don't have the, the, the resources for. And then taking these funds and actually distributing them whilst also offering the, the, the right kinds of trainings to, to be able to... to to build something off those uh, those startup grants, right? Um, and I think our goal is really about when you are building local and independent media hubs or initiatives, you are essentially alone. But when we're building a network of them, those funds and those you know uh, skills sharing or resources or whatever okay one independent media hub of 15 journalists might struggle to you know get a big european commission um grant but five local media hubs could do that together and it's really about pooling the resources and and thinking about different um ways to move forward and that's you know already with with several of our hubs, we are pitching for projects together and doing all kinds of things. So um, it's kind of like already having your, yeah, having your 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 crew ready <laughs> for whatever whatever comes up in 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 terms of the, the the funding landscape. But that's also changing. We're also seeing new players kind of come in and and you know what i'm sort of calling this this sort of space between private and, and 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 public funding and thinking about interesting ways of funding media that 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 comes from areas that haven't have haven't previously uh, thought about so what are the what other organizations around you 
are you seeing that are independent and uh, pan-European or even just local that are that are doing it well, like that are raising funds, that are having a successful business model or models, um, yeah, and are, are doing groundbreaking stuff? Are there any? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I think so. I think there are like uh, I really like Lighthouse Rappers as an organization because they do investigative journalism. They also publish on international news outlets and they report also local but cross-border stories, which are relevant and which are super interesting. Um, but there are also examples in Italy, if I can mention. Yeah, like, please. <laughs> no, because um, they are like our, let's say, uh, predecessors in terms of uh, organizations because they are like a collective of freelance journalists, investigative journalists who put themselves together in a group and started to um, apply for projects and uh, publish stories together. So a really good example is, of course, IRPI, which you might have heard of. And also FADA, uh, which is also another non-profit uh, media collective of freelance journalists like ourselves as well. Um, we are all in the same, let's say, network. Um, so it would be really interesting to cooperate and work together in the close future. We already met each other a few times and we are already, you know, discussing future ideas, let's say. This is just to say that even if journalism seems like bleeding in our country, there are so many good journalists, so many good professionals that are doing their job and they're doing great, but they're still struggling with uh, yeah, funding and uh, with also legal issues, for example, and they are not receiving any kind of protection from those who are responsible for that. So um, we had to cooperate we have to put ourselves in you know organizations to to work together because otherwise there is no other way out to do this job very true and i think collaboration is basically the only way forward if you want to survive <laughs> yeah totally i would like to highlight some of our part main partners on the on the demo program um which is arti fati uh, a really cool arts organization uh, based in France, and us, which is a network for reporting on Eastern Europe, um, who are also uh, based in, in. Well, they have a they have a, it's a network, but they are also based in um, Berlin. Uh, Will Media, which is an Italian uh, media organization, and Correctiv, who are our uh, yeah our neighbors at, uh, at Publix, um, who are based in in, in Germany, who do really amazing. Uh, staff and have found a lot of success in 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 yeah various different ways through various funding uh, tracks. And then I would also like to highlight two networks that we're part of. One is called Reference, which is a, a network of public interest media, and the other one is called Reset, which is a network of European media and culture organisations. And then, as part of our Circle Hubs project, we have about. I would say 40 organizations in in total who were part of that pilot project um, who will, will continue to, to, to take into demo. Brilliant. Well, listen, uh, we're afraid we're going to have to wrap it up quite soon, but I thought we could just end on like what one piece of advice do you have for, you know, organizations like Mara Media that are starting out um, that want to sort of fix this infrastructure issue that we have in the industry? I would, my advice would be to approach things with a service mindset, um, leave the egos at the door and learn how to collaborate with your peers. Alessia? <laughs> so same. I mean, uh, my advice would be for sure to find a network such as the one we found through the Circle Hops which is a really good and European network already solid and which gave us, you know, the go to start up, basically. Brilliant. Well, thank you both for joining us on the Journalism Innovation Network podcast. It was great having you both and hearing your perspectives. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tara. 
A big thanks to all of our listeners for tuning in today. Want to hear more interesting perspectives on news innovation and media entrepreneurship? You can join our free journalism innovation network by heading over to ejc.net slash network. This initiative and podcast is powered by the European Journalism Center and supported by the Google News Initiative. I've been your host, Tara Kelly, and that's all for now. See you next time. Thank you.